today on Divorce Court. Me and Steve met around New Year's Eve, and in the beginning, it was so perfect. But recently, we've been fighting a lot because he makes more money than I do, and he's spending his money on me, which I don't mind. I love Angel. He's awesome. But I'm gonna need him to stop with the clubbing and find a full-time job. He needs to understand that I am a go-go dancer, so when I'm on stage flirting with guys, shaking my bum bum, I'm strictly just doing this because I need my money. I respect that he go-go dances for money, but I'm gonna need him to find something more stable if we're actually gonna work out. Divorce court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with Angel Cabell and Steve Rios. The two of you have been together for a year. You do not have any children together, but Mr. Rios, you do have two children from another relationship. You two have been together for a while. You have difficulties. You've come to see if I could resolve them for you. In addition, Mr. Cabell, you want some money from Mr. Rios for damaging your property, and we will talk about that uh, momentarily. But I'm gonna start with you, Mr. Cabell. Why don't you tell me a little bit about how you and Ms. Mr. Rios got together. Okay, well, me and Steve met about New Year's at Pulse Nightclub, which is also the nightclub that the 49 people unfortunately that, passed away. Right, that mass yeah. shooting, yeah. Yes. And six of those people I knew as my good friends, and one of them I knew more intimate because that was my ex. And it was, it was a really sad moment in my life, and I'm really glad that he was there for How it. How did because, you hear, hear about it? I well, mean... somebody, I was in Connecticut at the time. I was visiting my parents. And someone called me, and they were like, hey, I'm sorry about your ex. And I was like, what are you talking you about? I was confused. Then I looked at the, the, they had four names that were already out, the first four. And he was number three. And I was like, at that point, I was like, I don't want to see the other, like, 44 people that were left. And it, it kind of hurt. And I couldn't really grieve with it. It was really hard to, like, deal with that. So that's why I'm really glad he was there to at least help me out. I had someone to talk to. I had someone to at help least... Help you cope with. Exactly. And that's why I'm really glad he was there for me at uh -huh. that very moment. What happened since then that has brought you here to discuss your relationship? Well, Your Honor, unfortunately, like, we have a lot of issues when it comes to, like, our trust issues. He has this hookup app. I also have the same hookup app. Um, and mm. I catch him on it all the time. And I don't really, I don't really like that because I feel like if you're gonna date me, you have to pay attention to me and not, you know, and not have a hookup back. That. Okay. Yes. Now, Mr. Rio, we're gonna talk about the hookup back, but I also <laughs> want you to talk about a little bit about your background because I think that has something to do with the hookup back. What's the deal with you and your family? Um, growing up, I grew up in a Christian lifestyle. Um, I sang at church since I was little. Um, I wasn't accepted. I'm part of a huge family, and none of them were gay. So this was really new to them. Christian mother. Did I, they abandon you when, when you came out, or? Yeah. You guys filled out a compatibility test, because I like to know, know what I'm dealing with. I see a guy over here where you just, like, you were stuck in that box for a long time, and now that you got out, you kind of wilding out a little bit. <laughs> uh, is sure. that what's behind the hookup app that he's so concerned about? Well, I met Angel. Um, we were party buds. It was, I wanted to be best friends. He was the one that wanted an actual relationship. I was done with relationship at this point. I had just gotten out of a six year relationship, so I was good. He was the one that wanted something serious with me. So I was down to party all the time. So that's why I was okay with it. At first, we were good with it. Mm -hmm. It was like, okay, whatever. Like, but then he's the one that wants someone loyal. Mm -hmm. As far as loyalty goes, that's not an issue for me. I'm, okay. I'm willing to settle down, and I want something real. I want mm -hmm. something that's gonna last. Yeah. What is your primary complaint about the nature of this relationship? He's really selfish. Explain that to me. Paying bills. I pay all of them. He makes money, and he pays for himself all the time. I that's mean, because I Hang don't... on, Mr. Ooh. Mr. Cabell, Mr. Rios, go ahead. Yeah, um, he's, just, he's just really greedy. He just worries about Angel all the time. He's not... He doesn't care. He's just really selfish. Mr. Cabell, what, what's your response to that allegation? I don't think I'm selfish. I think it's just the fact of mm -hmm. I don't make as much as he does. So the money I do make, I kind of like, I guess, use it on me first before I like, you know, try yeah. to like, oh, okay, but never mind. Be, that's the definition you're, you're of selfish. <laughs> it is, it is. There you go. That's all, that's all we're trying to get to okay. here. There you go. You got, you caught yourself. That's very good. All Most right. people aren't self-aware. It is. Mm -hmm. He's yeah. making more money, so you decide 
his money is your money, and your money is your money. Yeah. And that, and that's why he's upset about that. I figure that. it'll be okay just for the fact if he makes a little bit more, so whatever he spends, like, a little bit here and there, it wouldn't be as bad, because he makes let, a little bit more. Let, 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 let me tell you sense. something. It is not okay. As a person who makes more money, you got to, even if you make less money, you got to do something. Yeah. You got to chip in, because you, you, you feel yeah. used otherwise. Lost 150 pounds. Hey. Mr. Mr. Reese, why don't you... Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, turn around. It's all right. I'm trying to lose 10. Can't do it. Um, <laughs> tell me what precipitated that weight loss. Um, after my breakup with my kid's mom. Um, uh -huh. She was hot. I loved her. Um, and she made me feel... Are you like bisexual? Was... Or... Yeah. Yeah. In none of my business. Oh my. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Did this weight loss occur during the course of your relationship? No, I met no. him, I was already skinny. You're already skinny looking good. Yeah. Yes. All right. No, good for you. <laughs> Why won't you delete the apps that bother him? Because, again, I went into this relationship. With the party buddy. I was good, chilling. I've been in a committed relationship. I, I'm good for now. I'm young. I wanted to be doing my, my thing. He was the one that wanted something real, so I deleted it for him because loyalty, again, it's never mm -hmm. been an issue for me. Mm -hmm. He's the one that keeps on downloading it and I keep on finding out. So why am I going to stay home waiting for somebody when I could just do me? And oh, you downloading the app? He, download, he downloaded it first. No, I That's didn't. That's the only Angel, reason why I downloaded there. it. Ja, no. So if this is a tit for tat download issue. <laughs> Pretty what we much, got here, like you know, what, if you're gonna be having that on your phone, I'm gonna put it on my phone. It's like a competition. Pretty thing. much. Oh yeah. my goodness. <laughs> that, hang on, we, we're gonna move forward because I got something that concerns me. I was at home chilling, waiting for him. I, we're we're good. He was, he said he was playing video games with some drag queen. I'm waiting in the parking lot. He's making out like his tongue up in somebody else's no, throat. No, I. Yeah. Mr. Cabell, was that happening? Now, Mr. Rios, you say that you're comfortable and you're cool with the kind of relationship that Mr. Cabell wants to have. Yet and still, my understanding is that you initiate pictures of your situation with other people. That Tell me how that fits into the exclusive nature of your relationship with Mr. Cabell. Your Honor? The only reason why I have that app was because I saw it with... I it's an him. app? It's an app. It's an app. There, no, wait a minute. No, wait a minute. <laughs> There's an app that features up people's no, situation? No, I mean, no. It's, a, <laughs> it's like you have a profile picture, and then you message, you message them, and then you have a picture, okay, you send it. And they send a picture of that? Yeah. Yeah. That's all he does, Your Honor. Mm, send it. No. L yes. Like, look who's talking. Um, He's no. the one that does it. Again, loyalty has never been an issue. Do you do it too? When he does it, yes. No, I that do. is not, I do. That I do is because not, I want to get no, back at him. No, no. So uh -uh. I tend to just do it. No, that is in not spite the truth. Of... Angel, you know this is not the truth. But, but, you know and then the maybe, maybe this is a thing where I just don't understand. I'm too old, and <laughs> and and you know I just need to Your go Honor. home and take a nap. Your Honor, there was one time. Um, what are the? What are the? How did it? <laughs> When you get a get one, Your Honor, basically, what, what, what does you? that do for you? I mean, well, oh, that Let was me tell stupid. You, this, the first time, the first time he played me, first time he played me, I was I was at home chilling, waiting for him. I, we're we're good. He was he said he was playing video games with some drag queen. I'm waiting for his my roommate because he told my roommate the truth what he was doing, going hooking up with somebody. But I didn't. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. I'm waiting in the parking lot. He's making out, like, his tongue up in somebody else's no, throat. No, I... <sighs> yeah. Mr. Cabell, was that happening? Yes. yes. Yeah. I understand, I Mr. Cabell, you have trouble queen. with the fact that Mr. Reels is a go-go dancer. I'm the go-go dancer. You're the go-go yes. dancer. <laughs> yeah. Has Mr. Reels expressed concern about your go-go dancing? No. Yes. In the beginning, he was semi-jealous right. about it. Like, he I got felt over it. like 
if he didn't pick me up one day, because he always picks me up. So if he just didn't pick me up one like one day, that I would go with someone else and like go do something, which I don't, I wouldn't do. But I just when I go go dance, it's strictly because I want to make money and no. I do. No. Yes, that's mm -hmm. what it is. Like, what no. do you he think? He doesn't even make money like that. Oh, is this your? Oh, here we go. <laughs> now is this your go go outfit? Yeah, it's like a jock strap. Oh, okay. <laughs> Backside, like frontside, y'all just got everything more out. Side, I basically <laughs> wear something like this. But like the type of material I like to dance in, it's kind of like stretchy. So mm -hmm. when I do like shake my, you know, down <laughs> area down there, it, it jumps up more and like you could, it makes, you know, but at the same time, like I would wear that because that makes more money. And... Are you a good dancer? Is that, is, is, or is it just, you gotta have a good body? I, I think I'm an okay dancer. It's just, I don't have a good body for it but I have a nice butt, and that's what people like pay attention to. Like, you know what I mean? Like, they look at that more than body. So yeah, that's I got what you. I... Yeah, yeah, I got it. I can I got show it. you something. I got it. Do you want to see? Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's early. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Basically, like, all right, so I, when I dance, I usually dance for like older men in a way. So they are the ones that tip more. Obviously they're retired, they, you know, got money. <laughs> so like basically like when they're like in front of here, I just basically like just shake it and then I'm just like this. And then sometimes we have to like twerk it out a little bit. So I'm just like, you know, like shake it a little bit. And then they like that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> You're smiling, you like it, I know. <laughs> I'm smiling because <laughs> I feel so out of touch. <laughs> I mean, just, just generally, I mean, pictures of your situation out, and it, this, we're doing this, that, and the other thing, and you know, you know, every, yeah. you know, back in the day, you know, we kept that stuff packaged up. <laughs> uh. Things are different now, I get it. Yeah. My understanding, however, Mr. Rios, is that in retaliation, you slept with his co-worker? I'm not gonna wait. I'm... Walk me through that thought process. What he does at the club makes you jealous, no? At first, not anymore. It's just a job. It's just a job? As long you as you're coming back home job. to me. If you're coming back home to me. Have you Which ever I caught him do. doing anything inappropriate as a function of his gig? Yeah, because no. these guys, these old guys, if they paint, they become his sugar daddies. So he he asks for favors after the fact, and they give him favors. No, he's no, chilling no, with no, them no, all day. No, 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 no. I've seen messages. Oh. I've seen messages of a few sugar daddies. So he's not at the bar at the sugar daddy. But Mr. Cabell, you got a couple sugar daddies? I was there. No, That's I why don't. he didn't do it. I anything. don't. When I I really don't, honestly. Like I I have. That's not the truth. I wouldn't call he's them lying. sugar daddies. I would tell them to come to the club, because I know they're the ones who are gonna give me more money. So I always text them, I'm like, I'm dancing tonight, come. You know what I mean? But I feel like you should be the last one talking about sugar daddies, because he has multiple of those as well. No, so that's I don't. why. Well, who was the guy you were kissing in the car? One of my friends. A drag queen. A that... friend of yours? Yes. You're now right. you're telling me that you want him to have a more exclusive relationship with you. What are you doing in the car with a drag queen? In the beginning, I do admit that I did kind of mess up. I wasn't, I, w I wanted to say I was ready, I but I wasn't. And now I've I kind of noticed all the things that I did, and I see that, and I guess I want to like you not. Get, you want to rise above it and, and go beyond it and, and, and push past it. Yeah, because I know I'm a good person. I know I can offer a lot to him, but in the beginning, I guess I just wasn't as wasn't ready. Wasn't quite ready. So my understanding, however, Mr. Rios, is that in retaliation for that, you slept with his coworker. <laughs> I'm not gonna wait. I'm... Walk me through that thought process. We went to the, and I noticed that he was like, every time I see him, he would do like little remarks to me. And I just knew that he wanted it. So, um, so when he did it. this, when he did this, I, the same night, I was just like, okay, I'm not, again, I'm not gonna be loyal for somebody. If you're not gonna be loyal, right. I'm not going so to be loyal. So that's why I went and I did my thing. He's, he was cute, so I did it. But I made out with somebody. You could have made out with someone equally. No, so it would have no. been just right, equal no, playing you, field. You he just me. took it to the whole nother level you and me. just, you know. You played me, I'm gonna get mine. It was just, that was unnecessary, I guess. So how long have you two been faithful to one another? Give me, give me the faithful. longest stretch. I've been, I never played him. Again, loyalty, never been an you issue. You slept with cute. his coworker? I broke up with him because I just got played. Well, so you break up, you do whatever, and then you get back together again? 
No, he so wanted to get much. back together. He, he you left. Are you together now? No, that is yes. not the truth. We're together now. I did not want to get back together. You guys baby. came here to make me crazy, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I like you. I'm enjoying you. I just can't figure out what the two of you were doing. What do you really want? I want to show him that, yes, because I did make my mistakes and I did, you know, mess up in the past, that I can complete... I want to completely turn that around and, like, do it again because I messed up once and I want... I guess I want to show him that I'm not that type of person that I was before. And I know a lot of people say that, right. and I guess it's just about actions. What do you want? I want his loyalty. If he can be loyal, I'll give him whatever he wants. I'm... I'm a good guy. Well, now I'm gonna go forward. I wanna talk about what happened to that phone. You want $750 from him. Mm -mm. Uh, you want his money and his love. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna talk about both of those things. <laughs> Mr. Cabell, tell me about the $650 you want me to award you from Mr. Rios. Okay, so basically, we went to the club one day, and we came back, and we already talked about he was gonna give $20 so we can, like, smoke, and we were gonna smoke, so then he fell asleep. So I tried to wake him up no, that's... Call, stop, multiple stop, stop. times, and he hasn't. He didn't wake up. It was me, my our roommate, and we were all good. She mm -hmm. was gonna put 10, he was gonna put 10. He didn't have a 10, so I just took 20, and then she was just gonna give it, uh, the 10 back after. Right. So he woke up and threw this whole, like, knip, you know, he just a got, fit. yeah, a fit. And he got just really mad. And then we basically fought and we were just yelling at each other, yelling at each other. And then he took my phone out of the charger and just started running with it. So he went in his car, I took his keys out of the ignition, and then we just kept fighting. And I was like, all right, I'll give you the keys back if you give me the phone. Then I gave him the keys back thinking he would give me my phone. Nope, he just drove away, threw the phone out the window. He said he threw it in like Lake Underhill or something. And I only had the phone for like three weeks. He's gonna sit here and say, oh no, you were probably drunk and you don't remember where you How had it. How much did the phone cost? It was like $650. $650. Yes. What was it? It was an iPhone 6S. Rose gold, great for selfies. Did, did you, did you, did <laughs> that, is not, <laughs> that is not the truth. That is not the truth, man. Y'all tickle me. Uh, uh, did you throw his, his, his phone in the lake? No, that's the fourth. Angel has had five phones this year so far. This guy loses phones like crazy. I didn't lose it, though. Yes, he did. I did not. I made sure I had that, my phone that and my clothes. That whole circumstance had... never happened according to you. No. It... I, and you know what, what happened was, it was the final straw. I was I woke up with more than twenty dollars missing from my 20. wallet, and I was like, okay, this I'm over it. The reason why he ended up coming out was because he was like, you know begging. what, you know what, Mr. Rios, I'm over it too. Let me tell you this. <laughs> yeah. Here's what we got here. Uh, you two aren't ready to be in a relationship. You two are playing. <laughs> you two, you know, tit for tat, cheating, and this. And being out there and, and, and young and loose, as long as you're safe with it, why not? Why force a relationship when clearly both of you just want to play? Play on, play on. But don't, <laughs> but don't make it a difficult thing by, you know, forcing yourself into a box of a relationship neither one of you are mature enough to sustain. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. With respect to the phone, based upon your retaliatory actions and habits, I believe what he said. I believe everything he said about what happened with the phone and the charger and the 20 and the this and the that. Consequently, I will award him $640.59. It is so ordered. The judge said I wasn't ready for a relationship and I, I agree because we're honestly, we're not ready. If this relationship doesn't work out, I think we are still capable of being friends. Today on Divorce Court. Diamond and I were high school sweethearts and everything started off great. But recently she's been very controlling and verbally abusive and she just can't stop talking to her exes. Before me and Raheem were intimate, we were real close friends. When we got together, we unleashed some unknown secrets, some unknown feelings. We have two kids and we've been together seven years and he's still playing games. We recently been talking about getting married and I do love her, but if things don't change, I don't see a wedding happening. Divorce court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with Diamond Adams and Raheem McRae. The two of you have been together for seven years. 
you have two children together and you still can't decide whether or not you should marry, so you've come to me. Uh, you filled out my compatibility test and given me your license with permission to tear it up. Should I think your union is ill-advised? Ms. Adams, I'm gonna start with you. Why do you love him but are concerned that marriage may not be the thing to do? I love Raheem, but I feel like he controls everything. Try to control every situation. He has a problem with mixing business with pleasure. Um, so I just feel like um, there's well, trust issues. Give me an example of the control. What, what things does he try to control that you think are inappropriate? Controlling, like, um, we have a son, and if um, he wants to discipline our son and I feel like it's too harsh, you feel he feels that I need to stay in my place. That's not a woman's place to even try to overcome, but we're parents, so I feel like we should compromise. You should listen to what I have to say and I'll go with what you have to say too, but we, we both parents. But he feel like, no, you're overstepping your boundary, you need to stay in your lane. I'm the father, I'm the man, I have the last say so. Mr. McCray, is that your general philosophy with respect to... No, ma'am. ...the home? No, ma'am. I actually, I feel like I should run my house and my family household as a kingdom would. A king, a queen, a prince, a princess. So it's not as if I'm putting myself before you, it's if I, I want you to be beside me. You know, like we're working to as a step team. step on me, mm -hmm. basically. But, do, but if there is contention about something. She says A and you say B. Is it your contention that B should overrule A simply because that's what you said? I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just asking you what, where you're coming from. No, ma'am, not at all. Yes, she's, actually, she's actually overdoing it right now. That's not even what it is. When I say something, I actually ask her if she agrees with it. Most of the time, she just doesn't agree with it. So that's where the issue comes into play. No. She wants to run, run things her way, and I want things to kind of go my way. There's no compromise. There's no compromise. You say that, and we're going to talk about all of that, but you also said that you, you don't trust him, that there are trust issues. What, why don't you trust him? I don't trust Raheem because Raheem is a jack of all trades. He's an engineer. He's an artist. He do tattoos and piercings. Um, one day, um, he was in a hotel, and he do sessions, like studio sessions. And when I had woke up at 5 a.m., I had to go to work. I was at a gas station. And I seen his car at the gas station. So I stopped and I waited. But a woman came out instead of Raheem. So I followed the woman to the hotel. And it was Raheem's room. And when she got out the car, I asked her, who car is this? She says, Tony. That's Raheem's little artist name, Tony Snow. So, and I said, okay, well, can I see the keys? Because this is my car, too. She says, no, this is Tony's car. So I take the keys out of her hand and I open up the door. He storms out, he pushes me out, hurry up and pushing me out, which I feel that like he should have put her out. That's but he's steady pushing me out and he said he was doing a studio session, but I see no mic, no, no, no uh, big records, no nothing. It's just her in a bed, in a, in a room. So I feel like you're messing <laughs> with her or something's going on. Right. Mr. McRae, what, what's your response to that? First off, I do, I'm a mobile, type of person when I do my business. So I go from city to city, state to state, doing tattoos, piercings, or studio sessions. This particular time, it was an early morning tattoo se session, not a studio session. So that's why the equipment wasn't set up. The reason why she was driving our vehicle is because I was finna get ready to get in the shower. And I don't want another woman. In the shower for what? Sweat, exactly. No. You're digging yourself a hole here, Mr. McCray. I'm no, trying no, to like, I'm gonna keep dig talking, myself keep out. talking, <laughs> keep talking. I'm All right. trying so, to help you out. Instead of having the lady, uh, my customer, in the room with me while I'm taking a shower, I sent her off to the store to get her some beverages or anything to make herself comfortable while she was there. Why did you need to take a shower bef before you were gonna do some I work? I didn't take a, it's, I put it like this. I just got back in from town. I hadn't had a shower. I've been on the road all night. She knows this. I travel and I do my business the way I do my business. When I got there, I told her to run to the store. By the time she got back, I'd have been fully dressed and ready and, ha and had all my stuff out so we can get started on the session. She just now, so happy. what kind of session were you having? A tattoo session. A tattoo session. Not a tattoo session going to the shower. And when you come out, you glistening in water. It's not no. like she was in the shower with me or something. But that's she's making it seem like she was in the room or something. I got to say, Mr. McCray, it, it, it's, <laughs> I, I want to believe you. I really do. <laughs> I, 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 I want to I believe you're an industrious dude doing the right thing, but ooh. That, that was a little rough to swallow. But I, I, I want to move on to, to a couple of areas, and I, 
Ms. Adams, <laughs> you believe he's pimping out women. His contention is that he does his tattooing and his piercings in private parts of people's private areas of yes, people. Ma'am. And so he has to do it in hotel rooms. No. Because, hey. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to know who's doing what to who and why. Okay. I went through his phone. This is one occasion. And it was about a piercing. But the girl was asking, can he, she pier- can he pierce her private part? Right. So I was like, okay, that's, I mean, I know that's your profession, but it's a little flirtation going on here because she's saying, oh, you don't want to do it? You don't want to see it? Oh, you don't want to pierce it? Well, why you got to say all of that? Like, you want to fumble with it? No, that, that's some old stuff. So I don't, I don't, uh-uh, I don't condone in it. I don't, I feel like you try to put your, your profession in and then try to mix it with pleasure. No, I don't, I don't okay. condole you. Well, you still haven't gotten me to pimping, so we're going to work on that. When I asked him about the altercation in the room, his explanation was that she was going up to a room, she'll do what she had to do and bring me back the money for our families. That's so that's pimping, <laughs> isn't it? Mr. McCray, I'm going to give you an uninterrupted opportunity to explain to me the nature of your business, because I'm still a little stuck on the woman in the hotel room. So, do you, in fact, specialize in piercing and tattooing people's private parts? I don't get called every day to do somebody's private part. Right, right. But I do do piercings every day. Right. So, when somebody does call, I'm not just going to turn you down or turn your money down. Your money's still green. I'm not gonna turn you down just because you want a private area. And me and her have spoke over this plenty of times, actually since we've been in high school, because that's how long I've been doing it. Mm-hmm. And Well, she says the woman was flirting with you on the phone and it was the same woman that was at the hotel. Is, this, is there a problem ar- surrounding this particular woman? No, because we never had an issue with the person at all. It was actually just a customer. I can't even recall her name fully, so. It wasn't any type of personal relation. And her speaking to me in a flirtatious way doesn't mean that I engaged in that type of conversation. If you ask her, I actually turned her down and told her, no, I keep business and personal separate. Separate. Period. And I said that in the text message. What? But he let her drive the car. So that's a little bit something else. That is that that, that little... But how do you get to be... He's pimping women. That's the part I don't understand. When I, when I asked him about the altercation in the room, his explanation was, I'm trying to do this for our family. So I was doing some things with her that I said that She's I was doing. Assuming. No, I said that I was doing a session, but I was doing some things with her so I can get some extra money for the family. I don't condulge in it, so I didn't know. So he didn't tell me out right off from the jump. So he told me, yes, that she was going up to a room, she'll do what she had to do and bring me back the money for our families. That's so a lie. So that's pimping, <laughs> isn't it? That's a lie. Sounds that way. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, uh, oh, I, I don't know if it's, it's true or not. I mean, did any conversation like that ever occur? No, she's, she's basically going off of my past. When I was younger, I did a lot of things that I'm not proud of. So I would just say when that... When you were young, you were only 23 now. Exactly. Oh, yeah, I would say when I was younger, you know, when I was around like 16, 17 years old, I was kind of doing some wild things and me and her had just started messing around. So when she figured out that I was doing those things, she thought that they would continue on. But like I've been telling her... Hey, man. You were out there. You was out there, right? Hey. It was what it was. That's That's not what caught my eye. Didn't I know that? Did not know. You knew something. You say that he's verbally abusive when you argue. Explain that to me. Raheem is real irritable in the morning, and we have a four-year-old, five-year-old son, so he has to get up for school. And I had a baby in December, so... And I had a C-section for the first time, so I'm kind of hurting. I need help to get him up for school. It's 7 o'clock in the morning. I go to shove him to wake him up for school. He's D, you know. I can't say the yeah. word, mm-hmm. you know. He get mad. Oh, dang, just really talking. So I'm like, what's the problem? If I say something back, dang, you, you, trying, to, you trying to check me? You, you, you trying, to, trying to charge up at me? 
or you stupid, or that's verbally abusive to me because I don't like to get talked to like that. Or he a cuss, God, I gotta do this again. You don't do nothing. I just had a nine month old baby. I'm, uh, no, I just had it. She was born in December, so she's nine months now. Uh -huh. But I just had a baby, so I can't do anything right now. Mr. McCray, you care to respond to that? Yes, I do. Um, I would say that after working numerous uh, amount of hours sessions. and stand up, you know, you got to understand that when you're doing studio sessions, studio sessions. And when you're engineering. Yes, yeah, in the, uh -huh. and that, that goes on for a while. Uh -huh. So I, there's times I come home at 4 o'clock in the morning. If, if our child has to get up at 6, let's be reasonable now. If I just got home at 4 o'clock in the morning and you've been here, With why is kids. it so hard for you to just... Get him up, wake him up. You know, I, I still iron his clothes every night before we go, before he goes them, to sleep. I've been with them, Judge. I've been with them. I oh, believe he does. Man. Do you believe he does music engineering? I, I believe I have seen it. I have witnessed it. But I have see witnessed that? me just popping up, and I'll go see him. I'll come. I'll just pop up. But it's no engineering. It's smoking, drinking, females. No, this that, a party. See, this is what man, this is. That my, that's it's my customer's no no, preference that, for ability, getting no. their, their, their the selves ready right. for music. I got you. That no, has nothing to do with me. No, okay. <laughs> All right. He's the type of person that'll spend $300 on a, a hairstyle Wait. when we have rent due in two weeks. That's cutting into our budget. And she doesn't understand that I have to look like this. I gotta, I, she's more concerned on what's popping than us getting our family situated. Your response to that would be, One of your complaints, Mr. McCray, is that she is rude and inconsiderate. Why don't you tell me what you mean by that? When I say she's rude and inconsiderate, I mean she'll yell at me and get upset, and it doesn't matter who's around. Mm -hmm. If I was to make her mad right now, she'll go off, and I'll be all types of everything. I can also recall probably a month ago, we were at her uh, family member's house in East Texas, and we were arguing about, well, first we were speaking on financial uh, problems and things that we were going to do to budget. She instantly disagrees with one thing that I said and just takes it overboard. We're in a living room full of her family members. No, they hang weren't on, even paying hang attention. On. Hang so on. We're, while we're in a room full of family members who already don't look at me in favor, I would say. <laughs> she's just letting me have it. I mean, for this, you don't run me. I don't need a man. Oh, wow. Things of that nature. So it's hard for me to even compromise with her on speaking on that level of respect when you're just letting me have it. Now, 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 Ms. Adams, you've been in here for a little while and I have noticed <laughs> that you do come hard when, in, in communicating. I mean, and, and, and I know you're containing yourself in here, so I can imagine <laughs> what happens <laughs> when you're at home. Do you come at him really rough and hard? Yes, ma'am, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Raheem comes <laughs> off really hard. He does. He does. He's very, he's a Taurus. He's bullheaded. He's stubborn. So he come, I give off what you give me. I don't just come off and go off like that. Raheem has a way of saying stuff and doing things. Probably a week ago at the tailgate party. He feeling good. I told we, he feeling good having <laughs> drinks and stuff. When we get home, I ask him to help me clean up. Just help me back clean up or just wash the kids while I clean up. Cause I'm at my mama's house right now. So I just help me. Oh, you don't tell me what to do. Uh, you don't, no, you don't no, no, tell no, no, me. No, no, you don't tell no, me what no, to do. No, you, you're lie. not going to tell me what to do. I do it on my own. I, I'm grown. You, and these are your kids and this is your mother's house so no, you need to clean it up. No, and he storms out and he walks out the house. No, ma'am. You didn't walk out? Yes. Yeah, but not oh, Yeah, there. you did. Yeah, you did. Not what you said. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. I was looking at your compatibility test. There seems to be some concern about how you spend your money. Do both? Do you believe that she spends her money inappropriately, like on luxuries, as opposed to keeping down the house? Because I think you both claim that about each other. Okay. Is, well, uh, you go ahead and tell me first. Yeah, I would say that she she's the type of person that'll spend three hundred dollars on a, a hairstyle what? when we have rent due in two weeks. You know, she does things like that. Or she doesn't really cook often, so we eat out every day. So imagine $20 every day on just food. And we have two kids, so that's four of us in all. Right. Doing that every day, that's cutting into our budget. And she doesn't understand that I have to look like this. I gotta, I, she's more concerned on what's popping than us getting our family situated. Your response to that would be? Judge, I do hair in Dallas, Texas. So it's an image that I have to portray. I don't spend 300, 180 probably, but it's not 300. I have to, 
I do hair, so it's the image that you have to portray when I can't just be looking crazy, but I work for my money. Raheem, on the other hand, he work in the oil field, make 2000 every other week, and he only gives us 150 or or $100. You work in the oil fields? Yes, I do. So he's stingy. He spent $500 on a firearm other than just did giving it to it's us protection. so we can... What? It's protecting our family. No, no, not when bills and stuff is due and uh, PS4s is due for your son or you can take your son somewhere and take him to a football game or something. You ready to spend $500 on a gun? No, ma'am. You and are you talking... some interesting people. <laughs> <laughs> this is a before your vows session. I usually ask each person to say something loving and about the other person and express how they feel. And I, I never had the time to get there. We, we were in the hotel rooms. We were, we were, get, we, we were at the gas station. We, you know, in the, in the backyard. We were at the Giants game. It, yeah, and, and I never had time to get there. I want to I, I wanna say this. Rarely do I get employment in divorce court. Brother over here got three, four jobs. <laughs> <laughs> We're loving you. Yeah. <laughs> One of them's a little suspect. Uh -huh. <laughs> but you're working. Mrs. Adams, he loves you. You're a little strident. Do you know what I mean? Yes, You're the express train. And I think that you two are a good couple. You're working, you got two kids, you're young, but you seem to have good heads on your shoulders. You need to relax a little bit. <laughs> Calm it down. Yes, Take it down a notch. And when you don't agree on something, have a conversation. Don't have a screaming match. Those kids are counting on you to come out something other than crazy. If you continue to be crazy, your children will be crazy. Right. And they'll be crazy living with you because crazy people can't get out. <laughs> <laughs> you with me? <laughs> Keep your jobs. Be very careful about where you go, who you go with, what yes, you do when you get there. You know, you have, you, huh? you are right on the line. Yes, Calm it down, cool it out. But marry one another and enjoy yourselves. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I think that we just need to compromise and make the pride go down a little bit and we just compromise with each other, come to a mutual agreement. And I also agree. I think that um, if we come together and kind of compromise and work together as a team, I feel like we can, we can do this and we can make it through together. Today on Divorce Court. I am here today because me and my wife are currently separated. I decided that it was time to get me and my wife financially stable. She thought it was time to get a girlfriend. He decided that he was going to leave our relationship at a very important moment and I'm not ready to be back with him yet. She's not hearing me. I, I need somebody to help me so that she can understand that I was just trying to make our family better. If Angel doesn't change, we are going to have to make our separation permanent. Divorce court is now in session. I'm here today with Mr. C. Angel Torres and Ms. Akia Kia Torres. The two of you have been married for two years. Yeah and you are currently separated. Yeah. You are trying to get this thing back together so hard you don't know what to do. Yeah. She doesn't want to, though. We will get to that momentarily, but why don't you tell me a little bit about how you met and how you got together, and then we'll talk about how we got here. Okay. Um, well, me and my wife, uh, Akia, we met the summer of 2008. She was speaking at a Women's Against Violence conference. Mm -hmm. uh, I was sitting in the audience. We both worked at nonprofit organizations that were ally organizations almost. Uh, she worked with uh, children in schools and I worked at an LGBT organization. It was like the skies parted the day we met. I can't even explain it any other way. Uh, that particular moment we didn't get to speak because I was in the audience uh, with mm -hmm. my girlfriend at the time. The next day we, uh, 
we ran into each other again. It was it was another conference. I just happened to be lucky enough to be sitting right next to her. I was at a table. She was at a table. We were supposed to be working that day. We didn't get any work done. Uh, we just spent about seven hours just talking. Mm. And I, I never felt like somebody really knew me until that day. It can sound mushy or whatever, but that's that's how I felt. Mush is good in the beginning. <laughs> Mush is very good. It, it, it was a story out of the fairy tale books. Like I don't know why we're here right now. Uh, okay. That. Uh, do you know why we're here right now? Yes, I do. Why don't you tell me why we're here right now? So I'm here because he left me with my family, um, and it was a very bad abuse situation. I don't think he should have left me, but he left. Like he left, left. Like he didn't come back. Like. See you in a second, we, and no, didn't he come back. Up and rolled. He packed up and rolled, and we had just had a talk about separating. So for me, we just separated. That's See, what just happened. That's, well, what that's were the not the obstacles combo. you guys were facing. Just at my the time. family. I mean, like it. That's my family, my friends. I mean, a lot of people's opinions. A lot of mm -hmm. other people who aren't here to say anything about themselves. Obviously, mm -hmm. there's so but many people I, that don't want us together right yeah, now. Yeah. A lot of people aren't accepting of the transgender community. A lot right. of people don't understand that just because you identify a certain way that that's who you are. But that's yeah. the truth. I am who I am. And uh, uh, there is some aggression in regards to the fact that they, you know, they know, they feel like because I'm not black, I can't understand or like I'm, you know, breaking the race or something like that. But I'm Puerto Rican, Your Honor. I don't know if you know anything about, you know, being Puerto Rican, but you can't make a Puerto Rican with, without African blood. So it's almost like a conversation I don't even want to have with them because I understand the struggle of, of racism in this country, mm -hmm. but I'm not doing anything but loving this woman. God, and you I, will I, not, I, you, you, you won't hate me for that. Beautifully said, beautifully said. Here's the part that I want you to clarify for me. Okay. Once you moved into the house with her family, why did you leave? Um, at the time, I felt like I was the reason that we were struggling. Um, it was my fault that we, well, it isn't my fault that we lost our home, but, uh, it you know, it, it was... Why, did, why do you think it was your fault because you were struggling? What happened? Well, we were, we were foster parents for a while. Mm -hmm. um, my family members felt like we weren't good foster parents. Um, or for whatever reason thought I shouldn't be taking care of children. But you know the state, they do mm -hmm. background mm -hmm. checks and right. they check all these things beforehand. But my, my family members thought it was their right to say something. You know, they weren't happy with where they were. They made a phone call. They weren't even in the state with me. Um, and DCFS doesn't play that, Your Honor. Right. If you get one phone call, you're getting That's an it. investigation. I was working with an agency. They weren't going to leave the house empty, you know, for, for a month while, you know, DCFS figured it out. I, I had no choice but to, you know, end that opportunity, and that caused us so much hardship. Uh, we had to go back to Vegas because of that. That was the second time we had to be in her mother's house. I, I was tired of her fighting. Yeah, dude, you left because you were so unwelcomed and it was so difficult on both, not only you, but her. Yeah, like, I was really just thinking about Did my Did you life. understand that? No, Mrs. they were very mean. My family is black supremacists. They're like you know, the kind that believe that we should keep the bloodline clean and mm -hmm. like crazy stuff because nobody, like black people don't have a real bloodline. Like it's a lot of mixed stuff in there. Mm -hmm. um, but they believe that segregation was a lie and that we shouldn't have, like we shouldn't have desegregated and all this extra stuff. Um, and then the fact that I'm trans doesn't make it any easier. And they easier. hate that, like they mispronoun him. It was, it was very unbearable, but because of that, I felt like he would have took me with him as opposed to like, you see, that's there. the part I can't actually. I'm gonna go back and here. Hold, hey, just hang on with me for a minute. I get people in who have said, I broke camp for her or for him because it was so difficult. But isn't breaking camp making it more difficult for the person who yeah. remains? It's like I was getting punished. I, I completely understand that, Your Honor. But I had watched my wife cry many nights. I had watched that struggle get really hard for both of us. I had watched her have breakdowns because of the way that her family would treat me, the fights that she had mm -hmm. to have with them for me. I. I didn't know what to do, Your Honor. I've never been married before. I hope to never be married again. Like, this yeah, is... This, this you is, want this to be it. Yeah, this is but what I'm But you learning. thought that if you left, they'd get off her back. At least in regards to me. Like, whatever they thought in the moment, I knew I had every intention of coming back. We had just had a conversation. Like, she was trying to say that we were just talking about separation. I wasn't saying that I was leaving. I was saying it's hard for two people. It's hard for us and our dogs to find stability when we're constantly asking that from people who aren't trying to help okay. us, you know? I got, I, I got what you're saying, because a whole lot happened to you guys, and I, I, yeah. I want to I, I make sure that we understand all of it yeah. that happened.
I took a month. I got a job. I have an apartment that I'm moving into on the first. And that I'm ready trying, to, take I'm her trying with to bring you. my wife back home, Your Honor. This is what I did all this for. What am I supposed to do? But if he left for all that time without talking, not even that long. I don't even know what he was doing. Now, I understand when he left, things went from bad to worse. Why don't you tell me what happened? Um, tell her about you dating somebody else. Oh. Um, <laughs> what happened was I thought my relationship was over. I didn't have anyone to confide in. There like was an two extreme... Two weeks after I was gone, Mr. Torres, I'm gonna finish the story first. There was an extreme loneliness in being left in a place you don't want to be. So, there was somebody around and things just naturally progressed. I didn't like go on like OK Cupid or like eHarmony and make a profile. You didn't go looking for yeah, something. Yeah, I didn't look just for happened. something. Yeah, I, I felt like it just kind of landed in my lap. It was a really good person, and, and I like her. I mean, she's, she's pretty cool. She's pretty cool. Had you intended to return? I had every intention of returning. I, Did you I'm... talk to her about it and tell her you had an intention of returning? Well, see that that might have no. been. No, that's I, a no. I admit well, that's yeah, where that's a no. I, I admit where that that was where my mistake was, but I still don't feel like that's justification for you to go out and find somebody else so well, fast. Well, like well, our well, love well, for the well, past well, five well, years, well, six now, years. Now, Mr. Torres, let, I, let me tell you something. You can't just get up and walk off on your spouse, not tell them what your intentions are, and make and let them believe. That, you're, come that, back. that you're not coming back. But I've never had any, like, I mean, this is the first time I've been married, Your Honor, but I've never but had to But you don't have to be off. married to know you can't just leave your spouse and not tell them that you're coming back. You just can't just walk off. I completely agree with that, Your Honor, but she wouldn't, she wouldn't have let me go. It, it, we, right now, I'm in the best position to take care of my family, and I'm just here trying to beg for that back. Like, whoever this girl is, whoever she's seeing now, I has nothing on the history that we have, and I'm not sure. Are you sure. still seeing her? Yeah. But do you want them both? Do yeah, you want yeah, yeah, him yeah, yeah. instead? Do you want her instead? Can I have them both? I well, think, I, I, I know, hey, that's not up to me. He's not okay with that. He feels that uh, anyone else would interrupt our focus on fixing our problems. But I don't think you get to come back, you know, out the closet, like, hey, you know, go ahead and move on with that. I'm gonna sit right here. Like, things have been happening since you've been gone, and we have to respect those things. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's not about just leaving somebody on the curb who's been there for me when he wasn't. But if I could have them both, then I mean, yeah, I like, I like my cake and ice cream. Do you think that, given all the, the two of you have been through together, that you might want to give your marriage another try. I don't think it's. I don't think he has a right to. First of all, mm -hmm. to come out of the woodworks and say, "Be it's, with me and not this it person." It hasn't even been that long, though. It's like, been I, long I, enough. How long you I, I left her in June, Your Honor. It's it, what is July? it? July. We're coming up on the end of August. It's like two months. Yeah, but now, we've had Mrs. communication Torres, since then. Really? Three weeks That's ago. That's sixty days. And three weeks ago, I just reached out to her. How deeply could you be involved with this other person in it's sixty days? It's not about days? being. It's like it's not about being deeply involved. It's about honoring the fact that she's been there at a time where I needed some someone to be there and he was not. I don't think that he gets to just end that. Like, it's not, like, I mean, it's not that serious, but it's not not serious. But it's somebody I've been talking to. I, I care about but the if person. But if it's a choice, though, right now, between me or them, it, it sounds like you can't choice. make one. I don't, like, that doesn't work for me. I, I, I don't know I, to tell you. Were we not in the same marriage for all those years? We like both this were is there. this is this is how I feel about it. I when we have these conversations because we like she's she's acting like I've been gone for so long. I took a month. I got a job. I have an apartment that I'm moving into on the first. And that you I'm ready trying to, take to, I'm her trying with to you. bring my wife back home, Your Honor. This is what I did all this for. What am I supposed to do? But if he left for all that time without talking, not even that long. I don't even know what no, he no, was no, doing. No, 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 no. He was he was wrong to leave without talking, but he really loves you over I, there. I love him, him too. I agree. You don't love nobody talking like that for real. Okay. You don't love nobody. I I care vastly about the relationships that I'm in, and I love my husband. But I don't think, I think that he reneged his right to say anything about what I'm doing right now when he decided to leave without contact. Well, I'm gonna disagree with you in a moment. I would never put anybody before her. I haven't put anybody before her. I haven't, I haven't you think that was long time for her? I have not had sleep in months, you know, because I haven't had her next to me. I haven't. You abandoned me.
Are you looking to have a polyamorous relationship? Do you think that is a solution to the problem that you have? I think it is a very good solution. That's not my solution, Your Honor. If that's I get the, like it. we we had talked about that for something in the future, but what she's doing right now is being emotionally involved with somebody. What we had talked about in, was about her being sexually involved with other women and it not being this long term thing. Emotional, meaningful full attachment. Relationship. Like all all you're saying right now, like belittles everything that I've. Like, I don't even understand how 60 days can make such a big difference on so long, It's Honor. not the length, and I wish people would stop thinking that it is. Because if I punched him in the face right now, it doesn't matter how long I punch him for, I punched him. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, it doesn't matter how long this happened, it happened. And we have to figure out how to resolve the fact that it happened. You can't just say you're sorry and take back all that time. But it's not you even know about how, no, no, no. Did you guys talk at all during the We haven't really talked. That's not... He, this texting is not talking. You don't your text Honor, somebody about this stuff. Your Honor, that's not how it happened. We, what, what do you say happened? I, I say that we, we didn't talk for about a month. And I spent that how month looking that? for a Just job, looking for housing, okay? And then I did contact her, like, when I sat down with her and she was helping me get my stuff, I was like, we're gonna be okay, we're gonna figure this out. And that's when I find, find out she was already with somebody else. It was like, I didn't even have a choice in it. All I was trying to do was fix my family. And it's like, I can admit where I was wrong, Your Honor. I, I'm, I'm the first guy to, to say, say, hey, hey I, I did this wrong. It. I'm ready to make it right. What can I do to make it right? But what I will not do is just like listen to her talk about somebody else like they're more important than me like the past six seven no because that's what it is because I would never put anybody before her I haven't put anybody before her I haven't I haven't you think that was long time for her I have not had like sleep in in months you know because I haven't had her next to me I haven't you abandoned me you kind of did and I and I feel for you both so much because I think I know why you did what you did. You did it. You didn't do it in the right way. And I feel bad for you because if if if, if my husband just up and walked off and I didn't know if he was coming back and I didn't, didn't know, know where, where he, he was, was, didn't know anything. Didn't I mean, that I mean, that's like a you knife to the what? heart. Are you still mad? Little... That might be a little bit of what it is. Are you still like kind of giving him the punish. business about it? A is that bit. part of it? I mean. The way I feel about it is, like I said, I don't think he had, I think he reneged his right to kind of come in all forcibly demanding things change to fit his idea of what we're supposed to be doing was right now. Was he demanding? Or was that he, I leave her. Was he, he was at, or was he asking? An ultimatum is usually a demand. That's usually a demand. He, she, you can't get around that. He gave you an, an ultimatum. ultimatum. Yeah, is that's that a demand. True? She, I mean, she can't have both. I'm not, I, we, when we first got married, we had already talked about this because it was very clear to me that she, she likes female body people. She likes to play with them. I'm all about it. It doesn't bother me. I understand that. But what you will not do is act like I am less important than these people you want to play with. You will not create long-term relationships with them, which is anything more than a week to me. You will, like, we, we it, made rules. It, it could be a totally sexual mm -hmm. thing, but not an emotional, mm -hmm. yes, emotional it, it, affair. That's how, poly, that's how polyamory works. When you're going to have it, you have to have no. the most respect for the base partner. And I don't, she has no respect for me when it comes to this, Your Honor. She's had exes That's that she's true. texted. She's like, she's held on to a lot, you know, and I, I'm, I'm respectful. I ask questions, but I let her do basically whatever the hell she wants. And That's not true. now I'm, so much more. I'm just asking for the basics Miss, and the opportunity. I, can, I got you. I got you. I know what's going on. Mr. Torres, I'm going to ask you, get a, a last comment from you, and then I'm going to say a few things. Okay. Mrs. Torres, mm -hmm. what can Mr. Torres do to get this thing back in the place it was before he left two months ago? I am not a uh, skilled enough psychologist to answer that question, Your Honor, because there's some damage been done. Mm -hmm. And I think that we would have to actively put effort into that. Um, but it would start back with like us just communicating. I mean, mm -hmm. we're, we're really good at communicating. And I like to see how things progress because I, I feel like there had to have been a misunderstanding for him to even leave in the first place. Mm -hmm. so we need to get back to square one mm -hmm. and create a, a foundation for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I'm not really sure how to do that. Mr. Torres, this is what I think your problem is currently and how you would go about solving it. Okay. She's angry and hurt about the leaving. Yeah. And then when you came back, you came back saying, this is how it needs to be without acknowledging I hurt her, whatever, and that 
you weren't in a position to give an ultimatum. No. You, you weren't in a position to do that. You want to come back and say, listen, I love you. I want you. I understand what I did was wrong and I hurt you, but I'll do whatever I can to make it okay with you again. But you're not in a position to demand because she's still hurt and angry. And, so, and coming in demanding isn't going to get you what you want. It's going to get you more contention than it is. If you two are as compatible as I believe you are, she gave you what you needed to do, which is start with that conversation, with that comfort and that caring and that talking. Yes, she's got this other woman on the side. It is not fun to think about, but that's just not your issue right now. Your issue is reconnecting with her. Mm -hmm. And you can't get mad because you built this house. Uh -huh. See what I'm saying? Yeah. You built this house. Now you can tear it down, but it, 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 it's going to be a conversation, not an ultimatum. Mm -hmm. You with me? Yeah. You with me? Yeah, I agree. I think you're a wonderful couple. I wish you all the best. Thank you. And don't mess up a long-term good thing for a short-term hot thing. I'm just I saying. Promise I won't. Long-term, meaningful, it's hard to come by. Don't sell it short. This I matter agree. is adjourned. I am willing to do whatever it's going to take to save my relationship. I'm ready to be open and talk and accept the mistakes I've made. I'm just ready for her to come home, whatever I got to do to get her to come home. Um, I'm willing to move forward and we can get couples therapy and I'll move in. I'll come to the apartment with you. Today on Divorce Court. I'm here today because my fiance Calvin is a compulsive liar and I need to get answers as to why he hasn't completed his divorce yet with his current wife and today I will not leave without answers. The reason I'm here today is because Veronica is on me about this divorce thing. I don't have a problem with getting it but the thing about it is she been married for 12 years and still haven't got hers. If my fiance doesn't change I would like him to know that today this relationship will end. Divorce Court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with Veronica Ware and Calvin Alexander. The two of you have been together for two and a half years. You've been engaged for the last eight months. Joel, this is the trippiest before your vows I have ever seen. I don't have a marriage license. There are reasons for that. that are, there are a multitude of reasons for that. But Mr. Alexander, I'm going to start with you. Two and a half years with this woman. What's, what is your main complaint about the current state of your relationship? Uh, jealousy. Jealousy? Tough issues. Not uh, sex? Yeah, sex. sex. Oh, well, then, <laughs> uh, okay. Well, That's what I got in my notes. Uh, the sex, uh, the sex is, 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 I mean, the sex is great, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. but for one, it's basically on her time. Like, for example, see, I do landscaping. Mm -hmm. Okay, so some days you know, I come home from the hot sun, all I want to do is get in the air, eat, maybe spend a little time, you know, probably lay down and go to sleep. Okay. So she come in, you know, she said, well, look, I want to do this. Okay, I got to do it right then. If I don't, if I don't do it, I've been sleeping with somebody else, basically. Now, so, wait a minute. The man comes in from a hard day of work, walks but, in the door, and you just want it right away. <laughs> <laughs> you don't give him but, time but to relax or cool down or nothing. <laughs> it's, it's not that, Judge. It's that he... It's really the other way around. He wants it whenever he wants it, how he wants it, when, any type of way, shape, form, fashion, upside down, but top, bottom. I don't get bottom, it that way. I don't get it any, that way. That's, now, now, that's, the, that's the main thing. Are you a sexual adventurer? I guess you could say that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just not but, me. But, but the thing about it, like I was saying, see, you know, when she said, let's go, I got to go. If not, I've been sleeping with somebody. But if, but if it's the other way around and I say, let's go, but I'm tired of this, and that's just that. Yeah. Now, do you believe that if he doesn't want to have sex with you the moment he gets in the door, he's actually sleeping with somebody else? 
Not necessarily believe that. I don't think it happened as if how he's saying it. It may be so that I also work a job too. And just recently I was working two jobs, so I'm tired also. So we're both working jobs and juggling seven kids at the same time. So the time that he may want it may be when the kids just got out of school or, you know, I got other things going on, helping with homework. It's just like out of the blue. Me so more, I feel like I'm on like a timely fashion where we're about to go to sleep at night or, you know, I feel mm -hmm. like I just pick the best times. Right. Where so him, <laughs> anytime, any place, any it's just. It's not anytime, any place. It's, it's not Does easy. she have trust issues? I mean, is it, it, is it just when you don't have sex when she wants to? Is that the only thing that makes her upset, Somebody or does she have issues? other trust issues? Nah, she got other trust issues. Uh, like, for example, if I leave the house and go to the store, and it usually takes me 10 minutes to get back. If I come back in 11 minutes, oh, I've been with somebody else. <laughs> I've been doing this, I've been doing it. We had an incident one time uh, while I was at work. I was working for a guy. Uh huh. And we were doing landscaping. So he called her, you know, we tell him, look, we done. So he said, okay, go to the house, take my stuff to the house or whatever. Plus, he had to pay us. Okay. So we get to the house, he's not there. So when he pull up, maybe 10 minutes later, he got a stove on the back of his truck. So he like, look, I need y'all to help me tote this stove in the house or whatever. So we're like, okay. And at the time, I think it was me and maybe two or uh, more other guys. So we towed the stove in the house. My phone go to ring. So I answer the phone, hey, babe, such and say, at the time, I'm still moving the stove yeah, while right, I'm talking right. on the phone. So we get in the house, and the dude I was working for, he had, a, a, he had his granddaughter down. She was down for the summer. And she's probably about 10, 11, but she talk a lot. You know, she talk too much. Okay. So we get in the house. By the time we get in the house, and we finna put the stove in, and the guy who stole it, he talking, well, look, I want you to put it right there. And I got her in my ear, trying to listen to the dude. Then and you got to hear a girl. Old. Yeah, you got her talking too. Okay. So she hear the girl talking. So I said, well, look, babe, I'm gonna call you right back. Probably 10 seconds later, I pick up my phone to call her back. When I look at my phone, I got a text. Oh, you a liar, you with this girl, you with that. Uh, now, did you really think, I mean, the man's got a stove and a 10-year-old in there. Did you really think he was fooling around on you? I think the issue was he didn't communicate and let me know what he was going to be doing once he got off work. My knowledge was that he was off and on the way home. So when I called she to see where he was, he's doing another job, and I hear a, a, it sounded like a woman to me, and I hear a woman in the background, my suspicion jumps up. But you know, 50% of everybody around is a woman. I mean, you could, you, you, it's, it's, we're everywhere. We're everywhere. Now, now, you do say you have one legitimate complaint, which is with respect to some pictures he has texted to other women. Why don't you explain that to me? Yes, man. Well, the story he just told you about the day from moving the stove. Right. That day passed by and we said what we said, but maybe like a week later, I got his cell phone and I was just browsing through and saw a picture. <laughs> just browsing. <laughs> just browsing, you know, just browsing. Just browsing Not really yeah. being nosy, but just browsing. browsing. She liked to look and, for stuff. And I saw a picture of him exposing himself. And when I asked him about the picture calmly, not just like overacting about the picture, his response was, I don't remember taking the picture. I'm going to tell you the but same thing. Mr. Alexander, respond to that. <laughs> what is your know, response tell, to that allegation? I'm going to tell you the same thing. I don't know how that picture got in there. But, phone. Judge, the picture was I, taken the same day he was supposedly that was just moving the, cool the stone. That was just a cool incident. But, Ms. Mr. Alexander, look, mm. I'm going to challenge that notion for a moment. Okay. In order to take a picture of your situation. No, listen, listen, listen. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Listen, 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 listen. But see, the, the way the picture was taken, like I was using the bathroom. And I had a soda in my hand. So therefore, I mean... Judge, it, it was a pop in whoa, one whoa, hand. Whoa, 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 whoa. Using the bathroom with a soda in your hand and the phone outside, and your situation. Yeah, yeah, listen, listen, listen. How many hands you got? Well, I'm just... I'm, I'm just saying, that's how I'm sitting in You know, when you go to the bathroom, put the phone I in the pop, I wasn't even in the bathroom. He was, was outside, outside, Judge. He was outside. That was the thing. I was outside. It don't add up. <laughs> At all. At all. And all I get is I don't remember taking the picture. I don't. So my problem, my reasons for having these suspicions when he's supposed to be moving the stove, I have many reasons She's to been why. She's had suspicions though way okay. before this time. I got you. I got you. Now, I said at the top of this matter that this is the trippiest 
uh, before your <laughs> vows I've ever had. And one of the reasons it's a trippiest before the vows I've ever had is because there are other people involved, which includes the two of you's spouses. You're married to other people, both of you. <laughs> and I understand, Mr. Alexander, you got involved with Ms. Ware while you were married, and you, in fact, left your wife for her. So we are going to uh, see what that brings us. For one day, it's. One day you can find her, the next day you can't. Like, right now, I don't know what's here. I do. My thing. <laughs> Joe. Antoinette Alexander, he says you're the reason that he can't get a divorce and end this relationship. What is your take on that? Now, Ms. Ware, even though Mr. Alexander did leave his wife for you, you say it's taken him too long to cut ties to get a divorce, and you're upset about that. Explain to me why you think he's dragging his feet. I think he's dragging because he's kind of fearful if I'm the right person for him. I think some of the issues he have may have him kind of maybe scared or maybe nervous or maybe he's fearful because his first marriage didn't work. Mm -hmm. And maybe he just... Well, weren't you the reason his first marriage didn't work? <laughs> no, ma'am. No? When I met him, him and his wife had already separated and he was living at grandma's house. What, why are you dragging your feet? Well, uh, actually... I ain't gonna call it dragging my feet. I think it's just kind of like a money problem. For one, the ex, she's crazy. One day she'll sign the paper, the next day she won't. Uh, one day you can find her, the next day you can't. Like right now, I don't know what she at. I do. My thing. <laughs> Joe? <laughs> now, Mr. Alexander, who is that? You know what she is? <laughs> 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 Say your name. Uh, Antoinette. Antoinette Alexander. Mrs. Alexander, how are you? I'm doing okay. How about okay. you? Uh, I'm doing fine. He says you're the reason that he can't get a divorce and end this relationship. What is your take on that well, assertion? Well, first of all, he's lying. And the reason why he's lying is because he knows where my mom stay at. He very associated with my brothers, so he know how to get in contact with me. I don't know why Calvin don't want a divorce. I, I couldn't ask that question. Yeah, when I contacted, not when yeah. I contacted Ms. Ware and I asked her, I said, I need this as soon as possible. And she said, okay, I don't live in Columbus anymore. And the job that I have now, I just can't just stop for Calvin and just up and just go. So, so I you and Ms. Ware have spoken? Oh, yes, on multiple occasions. Are y'all cool? No, yeah. she says they still mess with each other, not even like a, week, a year ago, supposedly. He was still sleeping with her in my car, at his grandmother's house. And even so recently, like within a couple of weeks, she just said that he's still asking about her and asking his family about her. About her. I have dealt with her ever since me And, and she her told me up. this out of her own mouth, sitting in our home, that she still had relations with him. Mm. She he denied she Ms. Alexander, is that correct? That's correct, and Calvin know that. I never dealt with her, period. Just as well, just as well when I contacted Ms. Ware about getting my divorce, she said that, okay, let me know when you come into town and we can meet somewhere because we got to be around a notary. We ain't got to do it, though. I got the papers today myself. That's good. That's good. You ready to rock and yeah, roll, yeah, right Mr. Now. Alexander? Right now. So, you ready to go? With that being said, whatever Calvin issues is, I don't know. And frankly, Your Honor, I feel like Calvin don't know what he wants. She ain't seen me in two years. She don't know nothing going on. She... My question to you is, are you ready to sign those papers today? Yes, ma'am. Joe, you want to give them to him? Ms. 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 Alexander, I want to say something to you. Mm -hmm. You're a beautiful lady. Thank you. You should step on and move on. Be happy. Oh, I've been there. Be dead. whole, free, <laughs> and... I am. You have been emancipated. Yes, Free. There you go. Be happy. <laughs> now, I'm a little worried about you, Ms. Ware, but we can talk about that in a minute. Well, Mr. Alexander is the man for me because he's been there for me since we have got back together. Where is your hurt? You hurt at some, at some place. Deep inside, I can see it. I can hear it. What's hurting you so?
Ms. Alexander, thank you so much for coming in. I appreciate your input on this. Ms. Ware, I want to talk to you momentarily. First of all, I believe that they haven't seen each other in a couple years. She said it, he said it. What are you thinking right now? Because you seem upset. I'm just upset because I don't, I don't know the truth. Like, she say one thing and he say one thing and nobody really like have proof. She don't have proof, he don't have proof. So I'm kind of like lost. You, yeah, I don't you're afraid. Really... You're afraid. What would you need in order to feel better about your relationship and his fidelity? What he just did. What? Divorce Cutting papers. Ties. Yeah, yes, you're gonna have to get a divorce too, because you both have to be divorced. Twelve years. <laughs> I'm just saying. Twelve yeah. years. Mine is yeah. more. Mine is more. It, it, simpler, it's more than though. just a detail. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. But it's, mine is. It's in. It's in process. I was I got spoken. You. In general, though, do you trust him? I do to a certain extent. The only reason I have never really not past. trusted him was she, because of her. That's the only reason I. We've never had issues with any other women, mm -hmm. any other. Things what are you, like what are you, that. What are you fussing at him on the phone for when he's, you know, or late? <laughs> if you've never had any issues with other women, what are you doing needling with him? Because it could have been with her. Mr. Ale my, Mi Mr. Alexander, you say the past is what the past is, and you haven't been messing up recently. I ain't been doing nothing. You know what I'm saying? To be honest with you, I really love Ms. Ware. Honestly. I really love Ms. Ware. This is where I want to be, and that's what it is. Mr. Alexander, that was a beautiful segue because I'm going to ask you to give me a 90-second sales job to Ms. Ware about why she is the one woman for you at this juncture. Oh, I, I, I ain't got to act. Do a good <laughs> well, job. Uh... Don't look at me because I don't want any declarations of love. <laughs> <laughs> she does. Well, for one, I love your personality. Uh, the time we spend together, I love. I love, like, the way that I can come to you and tell you anything. You always got my back. I know, you know, there's things I can tell you that I won't even tell nobody else. I, you know, you're the only one I've ever been with that I feel that I can come and tell you secrets or this and that. When I'm, when I'm going down the wrong road, I love the fact of how you, you know, lift me back up. And... Ooh, Mr. Alexander, that was good. I, you know, a lot of people come in, I say 90 second sales job, they say one nice thing and then start complaining. But you, but, but it's you, the truth, though. It's you, 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 you said it. You said it all the way through. See what I'm saying? You heard what she just said. What she said? She, she just, just said, said the same, it's the same thing. thing I, I never told even her. told her. Look. Okay. Ms. Well, Mrs. Ware, why don't you give me a 90 seconds tales job to tell me why Mr. Alexander is the man for you? Yes, ma'am. Well, Mr. Alexander is the man for me because he's not just my fiance. He's more so my best friend. He's been there for me since we've got back together. <sighs> he knows my heart. He knows that I'm a very compassionate person. He where understands. Is your, where is your hurt? You hurt at some, at some place. Deep inside, I can see it, I can hear it. What's hurting you so? I just been through a lot. I just lost my sister and my dad within like four months apart. Mm. And I just been going through a lot, like trying to deal with it and everything, and just like it's just hard. And he he been here with me, like he was know, right he, there, right there the whole way, listening, giving advice, not more so just like a fiance level, like a friend level. You know, we're we're more so like friends mm -hmm. than just fiance. Yeah, yeah. Yes, ma'am. I gotcha. I got gotcha. you. This is where I'm going to say this to you. I understand that in your first marriage, it, you didn't feel safe in that situation. And I think that would scare anybody, uh, looking at down the barrel of another, another marriage and wondering whether or not it's going to turn out to be a safe situation. Um, Mr. Alexander, I like that man over there. <laughs> I do. He can talk too much, interrupt a <laughs> <laughs> little, little bit, but I think that you two may have found the right person for one another. Mrs. Alexander, I think you have moved on. You seem so cool and solid and together. I just love that. You gotta, you, you gotta just be able to go. A lot of women just can't leave. Leaving to me is like, you know, a guy dumps me. It's like, 
involuntary emancipation. If I buy a hat, ice cream, I'm through. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> You know, you don't want me. That you know, it, it's all good, and, and you don't want him. And and, and I, I congratulate you for it, Miss Ware. I think you're entitled to some love and some happiness, and I do believe Mr. Alexander can give it to you. And I want you to trust a little bit. I want you to feel comfort in that beautiful face of yours. I just, and I think he really, truly does love you. And for a guy to put together a declaration of love as well as he did, because most guys come in here and just. Jack it up. We watch your show every day. We watch it and record your show every day. Jack it up. My man you know. showed in here, showed up in here, and he did right. I'd hand you a marriage certificate, but I can't because that would be illegal, and you don't have one. <laughs> but I, I wish you speedy divorces, and I, I do wish you a wonderful life together because I think you will do well. This Thank matter you. is adjourned. We're going to move on by putting this behind us and working on our relationship with the new trust that we have and going forward with that and working on our marriage. Today on Divorce Court. I'm here because I'm trying to get my marriage back on the right track the way it used to be. We have a lot of trust issues in our marriage, and I'm known for being promiscuous, but I'm changing my life around, and I really want him to start trusting me. Shanetta says she's gonna change, and she's not gonna cheat anymore, but I'm not so sure. He has to put in more effort. You know, a marriage is not one way. A marriage is two ways. If Shanetta doesn't change after 10 years of marriage, I'm gonna have to get a divorce. Divorce Court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with Shanetta Rice and Javon Rice. The two of you have been married for 10 years. Uh, you are having difficulties in your marriage, so you have come here. Ms. Rice, I'm gonna start with you. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your relationship and why you and Mr. Rice are here in Divorce Court today? When me and him first met, my husband, mother, and my father, yeah, they was dating. Say that again. My husband's... Miss, Mr. Rice's... Mother. Mother. And my father. And your father were dating. Yes. When you two met. Yes. And... And see, I, I feel like that kind of speak language right there, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah, and at first sight... Did I, you live in the household as brother and sister? After a while, yes. But see, I was living in New Jersey, mm -hmm. you know? And then I came down to live with my father, and... That's when I started living there. He was actually in basic training during that time, so he wasn't living there. Uh -huh. So when he finally came, you know, he started living there as well. So then you was... Is that when that start. happened, when you two got together? Or we was talking actually as friends at first. We was more of best friends. It wasn't nothing sexual at the beginning, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. How did your families re re respond to you two becoming a romantic couple, well, getting married? Yeah, well, at first, you know, they didn't even expect anything of that, you know? But then once they find out, they was upset. They really mm -hmm. was upset. But then they got used to it, you know? And mm -hmm. as time went, my father and his mom actually separated. Okay. Yeah, so it kind of made the situation a little better. But okay. they, they was upset. M Mr. Rice, is that an accurate recitation of what occurred between the two of you? Yeah, but... We wasn't never really living, I never really lived there. Like, uh -huh. I was like in the military, so I was like there for like there a for month or two. And leave, leave, leave and come on yeah, back. So it wasn't really like I was permanently living with them. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. So I understand the nature of your relationship, how it got started. Now, tell me why we're here in divorce court. What has happened since you've been married? The problem started when he left, like I said, to go to Iraq. Mm -hmm. And I started dating one guy that I was dating before me and him even got together, you know. How long was he gone before you started dating this first guy? About three months. Three months. And how long did you date him? A second. A sec, just? A split second. A, you just, one time? Yeah. How could you date if okay. you married, though? And then, when that was over, what, what was the next affair? The next affair was with another man that I met at a club. Uh-huh. 
Right, and... How long after the first affair did you start the second affair? <laughs> a month. A month. <sighs> and how long did you stay with this second man? I've never been with any of them, but I... One night stands with all of them? Basically. Okay. Right. And I dealt with him for maybe about two years. The maybe. second one? The second one. Total. So that wasn't a one night stand, that was two years. <laughs> it wasn't a one night stand, but in my eyesight, like I didn't want him. Like it was just satisfaction to me. Mm. Mr. Rice, were you ever aware of all these affairs she was having? Um, not at first, uh -huh. but you know, when I was in Iraq, I was getting like, you know, emails, text mm -hmm. messages, you know, telling me like she's doing this. And I'm like, nah, she's not doing that. I, I don't believe it. But then when she finally, you know, confessed to me, it just tore me up. Were you still in Iraq when yeah, she confessed I was still, to you? Yeah, I was still in Iraq. This man over in a foreign country trying to survive, and she, he's got to deal with that mess from you? <laughs> Did you ever consider not cheating on him while he was gone? It just seems like you never had any intention of stopping to sleeping with people. That you just, yeah, he's not here, so I'm gonna give me a dude. No, it wasn't like that at all. Like, before he left, we did have that conversation, and we agreed that, you know, I was gonna be his wife. You know, but when we got together, we was only together for maybe about three months before he left to go to Iraq. So it's like, I wasn't really ready to be a wife. No, we was and married. I, we was married for three months before I went to Iraq. We was together like a year before that. Okay, but well, marriage you married, life. But you were but, but you were married when you did I all understand, these things, you know that? I was not, I, I don't feel like I was ready. I really was you not ready, yes. like. You, you were something. I don't know if it was not ready, but we'll figure that out later. <laughs> <laughs> so, get me the man number three. Man number three, I didn't really have a man number three. You did have sex with another man after those first two men. Yes, I did. But it wasn't That's really the guy a I man. want to talk about I now. I know, but with that situation, like, it really, that was more of a recent thing than in the past type situation. Like, I know that's crazy to say, but honestly, like, I, I chilled out for a while, you know, because he so was in Iraq. But once he came from Iraq, so I So what you're you saying is you want credit for the couple of years in there that you didn't actually cheat on him. That sounds so bad. I don't want Wait. credit, but I just... Well, something things really, happen, you yeah, know? Yeah, things, the, things happen do happen. Makes, things, yeah, yeah, Ms. Rice, things do happen. Way. And something extraordinary happened with this third man, did it not? It actually was the second man. The second man. Well, right. something extraordinary happened with him, yes? Yes. We're gonna get to that. Okay. It wasn't that bad. That is the most trifling, low-down, tacky, freak behavior. <laughs> I have ever heard of in my entire life. This man is out here fighting for our country, and you over there acting like, you know, it wasn't what? that bad. It's horrendous. Yes, ma'am. It, 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 it's... <laughs> so tell me what extraordinary thing happened as a consequence with your affair with guy number two. I end up getting pregnant. He was still in Iraq, yes? Yes. Did you tell him? Yes. Mr. Rice, tell me what she said to you, how you found out, and how you felt. Um, I was on my computer, and I just mm -hmm. got a, you know, a Yahoo message popped up. Mm -hmm. And it was like, you know, I got to tell you something. And I'm like, OK, what is it? And then she just hit me with, I'm pregnant. And my heart just like dropped. And I basically like destroyed my room, you know, destroyed the laptop, everything. I was like so mad. And they had to take my weapon away. They, I, I don't Didn't know. know what you were gonna do. Yeah, yeah, basically. So I was destroyed. And I asked her, you know, to, you know, all right, have an abortion. And she refused. So that kind of made me like, you know, why? Why would you refuse that? And I, I don't know, I, I didn't talk to her for a while after that. Like, probably like the rest of the time I was over there, like four or five months, I didn't speak to her, no contact or nothing. So when I came home and then I actually seen her stomach, it was like, it was a reality just hit me again. Like, yeah, she, well, she really is pregnant. And eventually, you know, I'm a, you know, I got a big heart, and I was raised by my mom, you know. So I kind of just, like, forgave her and accepted the pregnancy, and I just wanted to, like, make it work, because I'm like, you've done the worst, so nothing else can be done. It can only so, go up from here. Basically, yeah. Once you got pregnant, did 
did you continue to see the guy you got pregnant by? Yes. Because he went back to Iraq. No, I, I was home. Oh, was home, yeah, and you I, were yeah. seeing. Yeah, I was home. Your baby's daddy while he was home watching the baby. Watching yes. the baby. It, it wasn't that bad as far as watching no baby, but yes. It what do you that, mean it then, wasn't that bad? Because, no, hey, 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 That is the most trifling, low-down, tacky, street behavior I have ever heard of in my entire life. This man is out here fighting for our country, potentially dying. You drop a huge bomb on him like I, I'm, I'm just screwing around on you while you're gone. And oh, by the way, I got knocked up by another dude. And you just drop it on him like it wasn't even important. And then you continue to see that dude when this man came home from defending his country. And you over there acting like, you know, it wasn't what? that bad. It's horrendous. Yes, ma'am. It, 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 it's... <laughs> It shows no character, no moral compass, no care, no, no, uh, no contrition, no nothing. It's just like, well, he let me get away with it. Well, That's see, the it best I could like do. That, Ms. Lynn. It really was not like that because, you know, even though I did what I did, he did basically the same thing. He also got another woman pregnant. Oh. And... <laughs> oh, yeah, he got another woman pregnant as well. And he said his reason for doing that was because I did it. So it was payback to me. He also did you do to that? My... I didn't get her pregnant. It wasn't my baby. It, it was, it was, she ended up getting pregnant, but that was during the time we were separated. We separated, and then, you know, I started, you know, seeing other people, and then she ended up getting pregnant. But then she came back, you know, to get, work it out. And then I was like, yo, you know, I got somebody you pregnant. You cut it off with the other woman. Yeah, I tried to. Well, but I she did. was pregnant. Yeah, but she was pregnant. Yeah, so I was trying to, like, keep it cool because I don't know if it was mine or not. So I didn't want to just, like, you know, leave me alone. Don't, don't contact me no more because, yeah. you know, the okay. child support. Right. So I just, like, yeah. kind of, like, okay. yeah. Okay. Give me a minute to decompress. <laughs> <laughs> they don't look at me the same. Me or my daughter. I think it's, like, a big misunderstanding. Like, mm -hmm. she sees it like that because of what she did. I see it like that because when they come and get the nieces, the other nieces, they don't ever come get my daughter. You understand mm -hmm. me? When they buy their nieces and stuff, they, they don't never buy my daughter anything. Well, you have two major complaints. One is you feel like his, his family does not accept you and the baby. And you also feel like Mr. Rice is not supportive of you. Mm -hmm. Why don't you tell me why you feel that way? Well, I feel that his family don't really accept me and my daughter because of the things that I did to him, you know? That's one reason. And then with my daughter, you know, they expected me to have a baby by him. I had a baby by <laughs> someone else. <laughs> yeah, so that, that, that brings a little issue as well, why they don't look at me the same, me or my daughter. But I honestly, I honestly don't think, like, they mistreat my daughter well, our daughter, just because, you know, you know, because she's not mine. I think they're just doing that, like you said, because of what she did. And I don't honestly think that they're even doing that. It's like, I think it's like a big misunderstanding. Like, mm -hmm. she sees it like that because of what she did. Mm -hmm. I see it like that because when they come and get the nieces, the other nieces, they don't ever come get my daughter. You understand mm -hmm. me? When they buy their nieces and stuff, they, they don't never buy my daughter anything. They don't buy, like, for example, for Christmas, they got tablets and all of that. What did my daughter get? And that's because you I already had me? her. No, it does not matter. If they buy Ms. Rice, let, 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 let me say this to you. You did their son so dirty. I understand. And that's not... And I know, I know that he accepts that baby is his, but that's somebody else's baby, and they don't want to spend money on somebody else's baby. Maybe, maybe that is not the greatest character in the world. Maybe they could have risen above it, but you couldn't rise above the gutter not to do it in the first place. So to e expect them to rise so much above that is really ludicrous. Yeah. It's just ludicrous. Tell me why you find Mr. Rice unsupportive of you. Why do you think he's not a good husband to you? I wouldn't say he's not a good husband, because he is, overall. But I honestly feel like, for example, I love nice things, you know? Mm-hmm. And, <laughs> and, you know, I expressed to him, baby, you know, you know, let's can you try to buy me this? You know, I really like this. Or can we go out and 
eat here or just do anything nice, you know, and I expressed that to him. And let's say a year go by and nothing happened. It's like I was speaking for no reason. He couldn't. Okay. It's like he, he moves Ms. so slow with trying to make me happy, and then when someone else makes me happy, he gets upset. But you didn't what, do this at what, the beginning. What, 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 what? Mr. Rice, can you respond to that? Yeah, she kinda, says you don't do anything to make her happy. I kind of do procrastinate on some things, but, like, I work, like, 12, 13-hour days, so... First of all, he just got that job this year. Well, like, year. a year so, ago? No, nah. no, 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 no. Right. August of last year. <laughs> If you're gonna forgive her mm -hmm. and you're gonna make a make a marriage work, you kind of gotta participate. Yeah, yeah. Do you feel like you're participating? Yeah, but probably not to my full potential because like it's so much going on. It's like trust issues and yeah. I want to see what we're gonna do next. How are we gonna come back from this? That's what I'd like to do. Is that what you'd like to do? Yes. All right. Mr. Rice, mm -hmm. do you want this marriage to work? Yes, I want it to work. Like, I just, all I want is like, I just want a fresh start. Like, you raised, like, now you can't raise nothing, but just like a clean slate, a fair shot. What would give you a clean slate? What could she do? Because I got to tell you, I could, I wouldn't have been able to trust her anymore because of the nature of the teach. It wasn't, you know, isolated incident. It just was, she felt like she wanted to do something and she had absolutely no moral compunction not to do it. Mm -hmm. Do you think she's changed? Yeah, I think she's changed a lot from then till now and whatever. That's why I, I'm willing to, you know, try to work it out. But if it was still the same, then I, I, I just, I would have been gone. I would have been, got a divorce, but I see the change in her. I just want like a. She's extra trying little, to be a better person. Yeah, she's trying to be a better person. Exactly. I just want like a little extra little push or somebody to give her advice. Okay, Ms. Rice, let me say this to you. In your papers, you talked about a lot of small things that he wasn't doing for you that you felt insulted about, or he's not going to take you out to dinner, and you feel like he's not supporting and loving of you. I think two things are going on. Number one, he's hesitant to shower you with love and affection because you've hurt him so grossly and so greatly, so extremely and so often. So it's hard to come busting out with flowers and roses to the best restaurant in town when you've done him so dirty. You know what I mean? So you got to lay off those expectations. So, because whatever hesitations he has, you put them there. Yes, ma'am. Okay? <laughs> Who you are is not what you've done, it's how you recover from it. From today forward, you have to express to him undying devotion. You have to give him complete and utter support. You have to manage to show him that you can be trusted. You have to go above and beyond before he comes back with anything because you have to be a better person. You know, you know how dirty you did him. You do. And I think that's why you're, why isn't he giving me, because you feel less than, because you behaved like you were less than. What I'm saying is, that was yesterday. And we're gonna shut the door on yesterday. But it, ha it has to be new behavior and thought patterns and ideas from you in his direction. Well, no, I do do new things. Like, I used to hang out all the time. I don't hang out that much no more. I be home majority of the time. I do new I'm things, you know? I I'm telling you, you keep telling me what you're doing and it's not working. So I'm trying to tell you, you must do more. Okay. Whatever you're doing, if it doesn't get you the result that you want, you move forward and do more and you do something else. Are you with me? Yes, That's your job. If you want to feel better about you, you do better and be better, and then he'll love you better. <laughs> you hear me? Yes, Whole new person today. <laughs> All right? Okay. He'll come along if you come, if you come correct. This matter is adjourned. After all I've been through in this marriage, you know, I still feel committed, like I can still move forward. Like I'm not holding any grudges or, or anything. I'm just ready to start, start fresh. I really want to live the life of a marriage person the way I should because 
I love my husband and I want my daughter to be raised in a good environment, you know? Not be the way I am. <laughs>